just to give us a clean opening here, um, my name is uh, Christian McCarty. You'll see me as Teltura on The Last Homely House and Ketura elsewhere. Um, this is my home setup that you're seeing here. Joining with us is Rad Hazard. Um, and I'll, I'll just let you introduce yourself. You can tell us what you do, how you do it, all that. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I go by Rad Hazard, uh, Rad underscore Hazard on Discord. Um, I run a pretty successful uh, paper legacy uh, Magic the Gathering Legacy uh, Discord. We've been running paper tournaments for uh, almost exactly a year now, so wanted to kind of parlay that into the Lord of the Rings TCG, which was kind of my my first love. Um, but yeah, we've been doing this for about a year, so we kind of worked out most of the kinks and just want to bring it into the uh, Loader TCG world. Right on. We're definitely glad to have somebody who uh, has a lot of experience with this sort of thing. We have in the past brought up the idea of doing uh, webcam uh, you know, games, and none of us knew how to do it. We were going to have to stumble through it, and so I was very happy to find somebody who is an expert in these sort of things. Uh, they have worked out all the kinks. Uh, we have figured out most of the issues that are Lord of the Rings specific, um, and so we're, we're, we're going to show all that kind of stuff off today. Um, but so to start, let me change the stream over here to just show my side for a little bit and then I'll just show off a little bit of everything that you need so of course one of the things that you need is you need to have yourself a nice you know big open area that you can uh, be pointing your uh, your phone or your webcam on um, that's the second thing you're gonna need you're gonna need either a, um, a phone with um, a website or an app that you can use to stream this or you can um, or you can just use a webcam hooked up to your PC so here we can see I've got a mount that I'm actually going to be putting the the phone into uh, once we get into this it'll be pointing straight down uh, so that you can kind of see w what exactly is is on my game board and it's going to be presented over there onto the screen um, for for rad to be able to see um, you do need to give yourself a little bit of verticality uh, so I've got like this this tower of stuff um, rad I know has his uh, webcam just kind of pointed at a himself from from above his head on a shelf um, and so that that kind of thing is pretty much what you need besides that um, you of course need your materials uh, for playing the actual game you need your deck you need your tokens and so forth um, but a couple of things that you might not consider is that you also need to have um, a bunch of index cards preferably um, this is going to be used to quickly represent your opponent's cards um, when they play them like for instance if your opponent plays a blade tip or something you need to be able to slip something in there to represent that as an alternative if you have a very complete um, you know collection and you are really quick with the uptake you could instead just keep those actual cards next to you and pull them out as needed um, but that is going to be a little bit slower I think in most cases um, and then of course you'll need some sort of writing utensil if you're gonna if you're gonna customize the uh, the index cards but so with that let me go ahead and get everything hooked up here so to We'll, we'll, we'll put links in the description and everything, but one of the, the tools that we utilize for this is a, a, a website called obs.ninja. And when you, when you uh, navigate to that website on your phone, it will automatically allow you to stream your camera um, to that website. And so if, all you have to do is give your opponent the, um, the same link, and then they can hook up to it, just like we have done here. Uh, so right and, and left. That's, and that's great for uh, streaming, but if you wanted to just do one-off pickup games, just Discord video audio is perfect. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so that's... Um... Okay, let me change my angle here. I'm going to experiment with the... My particular phone has... For our, yeah. our legacy group, the vast majority of them just use the Discord audio video. Mm -hmm. for matches um, and a lot of people too I, I do play a lot of old school Magic the Gathering they tend to use a site called Whereby so that's W-H-E-R-E-B-Y dot com and it's just another video screen share if you know Discord always isn't always 100% and some people like Whereby a little bit better but it's a nice another free option right on yeah we'll, we'll make sure that all these links are everywhere so that everyone can can see them um all right, so we've got my 
Camera set up nicely here. Uh, this particular phone has a widescreen lens on it, so that's what I've got to allow us, or not, not, not widescreen, what's it called, wide angle, uh, to be able to see everything that you, you need. But um, if your phone does not have that, then you just need to make sure that the phone itself is lifted up a little bit higher um, so that you can see everything. Um, so naturally, when cards are down, you know, there, there's not going to be a lot of opportunity to be able to see the... Uh, the text itself, so you can occasionally, if you need to, hold the card up um, if it's going to autofocus. I hope it autofocuses. Um, but most of the time, you are going to be spending your time reading off the, you know, the text to your opponent. So that's just something you got to get used to. If you're the kind of person that is looking forward to doing this, I assume that you are. What on earth is causing all that dingling? I think my mouse and keyboard are going crazy over there for some reason. Are you having earthquakes as well? Um, I think it's re really what it is. Is it, I think I've got a squirrely port over there that's causing things to move around. But anyway, um, I forgot what I was in, <laughs> what, what my train of thought was. Anyway, um, let's hop over then to some of the questions that one might have about different types of proxies. Um, I think that there's at least three different kinds of proxies that you might consider while you are doing a game like this. Um, first... Uh, you might consider proxies for your own cards, um, and that there's a couple different ways that you can do this. Um, one, so for instance, let, let's say that I had some rare cards, um, the high value cards that I didn't want to be shuffling with. Um, these are just thin and stretched, they're not that valuable, but I'm going to be using them as an example over the course of these games. Um, so I'm not going to be putting these thin, thin and stretched into my deck, um, and instead I'm going to be holding them off to the side here in a pile. Um, and in fact, let me just take an index card and we'll put them there. So that is my proxy pile. Um, and so there, there's two different ways that I could um, include these in my deck. One way is that you just take another card that is obviously not in your deck, like these one rings, for instance, and you could say that, all right, these one rings are going to represent my thin and stretched. Um, this is not a fantastic um, solution. Probably about the only advantage to it is that it's very quick, doesn't require any setup. Uh, but if you have more than one card or, you know, several copies, it starts to get a little bit... Um, a little bit unwieldy, so I, I really wouldn't recommend that method. Uh, the other way that you could do is that you can take a card, um, you can take an index card, you can cut it or uh, rip it down like I did here, and you just write the name on it in your um, in your in your card sleeve there. Um, so long as you do this, and you make sure that the the index card itself is smaller than the card itself, so that you cannot see uh, the index on the other side, then this is perfectly fine. You 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 draw it, you keep it in your hand, and then when you are ready to play it, you put it down on the table, and then you immediately just swap it and say, okay, I've got my thin and stretch now in play. And so this way, you don't have to have any of the the shuffle shenanigans going on with your cards that you don't want to be bending. Um, so that pretty much represents how you would rep how you um, use proxies for cards that you do own. Um, now for cards that you don't own, um, there are again a couple of different ways that you can handle this. One is just like with this particular index card I've taken and I have written down all the information for Thin and Stretch. Uh, there are some other more established Lord of the Rings games that will not utilize this, um, or not, not Lord of the Rings, sorry, uh, other uh, trading card games that do not utilize this method uh, because, well, the companies are still making money, but this is a dead game, so we don't have to worry about that. Um, just, so this has all the information, it's got the Twilight Cost, it's got the culture, got the card type, got all the, the, the game text, um, and so if you didn't actually own the card, you could use that as a method for um, including cards you don't own. But the other way that you could do it is that you could take these cards and you could you could actually just print them out um, and, and make, make proxies that way. Uh, so here, for instance, we have a Gimli's Helm. Um, which is really just a slip that has been printed off and put into the card sleeve over another copy of the One Ring. Um, all of these that I'm holding here right now are actually copies of the One Ring. I just have other things printed on top of them. I will be including them all in my in my deck. You can't really tell anything uh, different about the thickness. The only thing, once again, is you have to make sure that you cut it so that it is smaller than the card itself, so it doesn't peek through and you don't accidentally cheat while looking at your uh, looking at the top of your deck or anything. Another alternative to that too. Uh... I mean, it would just be to get opaque sleeves. You yeah. Know, and just, just slap them in there. And then uh, also for shuffling-wise, I, I double sleeve all my decks. So this is another inner sleeve, like this foil gimlet, or foil Gandalf. Just has another inner sleeve in it. A good point. I've only I've only got penny sleeves because I was never big on actually playing the game. Um, but, yeah, that's a, that's a good point. And then also with the opaque sleeves, too, you don't have to worry about actually ripple shuffling. You can just kind of slide them in yeah. on the side. Okay, well, with that, um, 
I think the only other consideration uh, that is unique to Lord of the Rings that you might have to think about is what you're going to do with sites. Um, so there's two different ways that I've found that you can manage sites. One is to simply take um, you know, a series of index cards, and so let's say that our site path is going to be up here, and lay them out side by side, and so you, you can fit you know, nine, nine sites all the way through. And so if your site goes on the first one, but then your opponent plays the second, then you just flip it over, you take your pen, and you write down, okay, what, 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 what site do I have? And you can use that for reference. Um, however, after having done this um, once, I feel like it probably didn't give enough information uh, for it to be meaningful. So I think the better method is to simply take your site and flip it upside down. And then when you move your token to it, uh, you just, you know, let your opponent at tell you what exactly that particular site is. Because sites don't, they're not something you have to reference constantly. Usually, it's usually you know usually it's some sort of fellowship action or shadow action or something, and so it's uh, it's not something you need to have you know in the forefront of, of what you're doing all the time. All right. Well, I think that's about everything you might want to know about setting up. Um, and so now, I mean, unless you've got any thoughts, Red, I think the only thing left to us is to go ahead and play a game. So yeah. I say we get into it. I think that covers pretty much everything and all the all the major points. And we have all a lot of these listed on the not the Players Council Discord, but the Lord of the Rings webcam um, Discord, which at some point will will get those merged. Yes. So. Um... Rad has established his own his own server, his own Discord server that has lots of resources for this sort of thing, um, which we'll make sure that that's linked as well. Um, if this is popular, though, I mean, if this is something that people actually want, um, something you want to run regularly, if you want us to, as as the as part of the players' council, to be running these these webcam games alongside our monthly leagues, then by all means, let us know, and we will, yeah, like like Rad says, we'll merge his server into ours. We'll we'll make sure that this is a regular thing, and. Um, you know, we'll we'll just make sure to push it. We don't want to put any time or resources into this if nobody cares, though. Um, my 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 yeah, myself. Like I happen to have a collection, but I'm I am perfectly okay with with playing on GIMP. Um, I do think, however, that there's some aspects of these that we can take to in, to inject. Um, you know, kind of a social aspect. Like even even if we if we are playing over GIMP, we 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 should be able to you know set up Discord rooms and such, uh, so that we can talk with our opponents. Which I think is the big thing that people are missing on GIMP. Not necessarily the the hold of the cards, but exactly. And that's that's kind of the reason for me creating the legacy for Magic the Gathering, the paper webcam resource for that. I mean, we have over seventeen hundred people on that Discord. We run weekly tournaments, uh, quarterly invitationals, monthly um, leagues, and that's just because of the gathering aspect of magic, magic, and that's no different in Lord of the Rings. So we really just, there's nothing that will simulate that being across the table from the person better than webcam. Yeah. Okay. And then that gives us a nice opportunity to BS about Lord of the Rings as well. Yeah. <laughs> Before we get started, I wanted to point out that if anyone in chat wants uh, information on what a card text is, they can just ask for it and I can pull it up real quick. I'm set up for that too. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Um, okay. Me and Rad will just be asking each other, but yeah, if anyone's watching wants to know, just ask in chat and Menace will throw a link up to the Lord of the Rings wiki. Okay. So... Um, Let's go ahead. I need my tokens. I got my wounds. I got my... Time to uh, knock off more of that 18 years of rust. <laughs> All right. So let's go ahead and bid. Um, let's see how much we oh, want to do. Another thing we like to do on the Magic server, too, is just do an on-screen cut. Ah, uh, yes. So people can see that your deck is cut after it's been shuffled. And didn't I read that it's uh, standard practice to keep your deck on screen the entire time? Your deck and, yeah, and, and, time, and your hand, your yeah. On screen at all time, and then also like keep your hand visible, and I know it's a little bit difficult sometimes, because your hand can also, you know, I'll use my sights as an example, if I'm holding these in my hand, it's easy for them to bleed through. Yeah. So just kind of try to keep them as straight as possible, but you know, inevitably, just uh, 
good sportsmanship and tell your opponent, hey, your hand's bleeding through a little bit, and then make him tuck it, tuck it back. Okay, I'm going to pull this whole table right. down. Let's see if I can get it to work. My apologies if mine is a bit shaky. This uh, goose mount that I've got works really well, but it is also very uh, sensitive to me shaking the table. So, All right. All right, I'm ready to bid. Great. Three, yep. two, one. One against two. All right, so you get to choose if you're going to go first or second. All right. Um, I'll go ahead and go with my site first. And okay. I'll just use this dice to represent burdens on Frodo. Okay. And on my side, I'm going to be red, and I'm going to have you be blue. Um, do you have an equivalent that you want to throw up? Okay. Yep, I got a red and a blue dice here. I'll just use those. Okay. Sounds good. Right, so I'm at the Prancing Pony. All right. Um, Let's go ahead and draw it. Eight. Yep. Okay. That'll work. Okay. Um, I'm not going to mulligan. Um, for anyone listening in, one of the one of the mul one of the things that the PC wants to do is experiment with some different mulligan types. Magic: The Gathering, I think, has a decent mulligan nowadays um, that I'd like to imitate yeah, because the the one Lord of the Rings mulligan has mulligan is is really nice. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's really been helpful. For anyone who doesn't know, it's basically you 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 take your hand and if it's garbage, then you shuffle it back into your deck and you draw. Um, and you draw eight more cards. If it's still garbage, then you keep doing it. And then once you finally have a hand that you're satisfied with, you discard cards equal to the number of times that you mulliganed. So if you mulliganed three times, then well, you Well, yeah, did. essentially, so you draw seven. If you don't like it, then you put shuffle those seven back in, draw another seven. If you do like that seven, then you just take one from your hand and put it on the bottom of your library. Right. There it is, on the bottom of the deck, not, not necessarily discarding, but... Um... Yeah. Right, and so you can do that as many times as you want, but yeah, it just increases by however many times for however many cards you put on the bottom. Exactly, and that that I think is a lot more flexible than the eight or six, and otherwise nothing else that Lord of the Rings has. So yeah, I feel like that's a a little harsh. I think that can be uh, yeah. I think a London Mulligan would be great. Um, okay, yeah. yeah so, so it's I'll yeah your about, fellowship phase. Uh, fellowship, yeah. Um, so the site is add a burden to play Aragorn from your draw deck, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. We went through all that trouble to shuffle, and then boom. <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, where is he? Come on, Aragorn. There you are. Heir to the White City, so I'll add four. And so just to keep things... I mean, honestly, when, I, when I'm paying off my, my Twilight, I want to have the physical tokens in front of me. So it, it ends up a little bit redundant that we're both tracking the uh, um, Twilight. But it can also be helpful if one of us, you know, dozes off and forgets. And you can look at your opponent and say, hey, is that the correct amount of Twilight? Exactly, yeah. Yeah. All right. So Aragorn, I'll add one more for his armor. I'll add another for Ranger's sword. Um, I will play Old Toby for one and draw a card. Um, I'm just going to go for broke here. I'll add two more. I'm going to play Frodo's Pipe and Airborne's Pipe. Maybe I should have mulliganed. Three burdens there. All right. Um, I'm gonna play that now. Yeah, why not? I'll add one more um, to play Betrayal of Isengard. What does that one do again? So that's the condition that says each time an opponent draws a card or takes a card into hand during the sh uh, shadow phase, remove one. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, then that's it. I will move to your site too. Okay. So and my... am I blue, you said? Yeah. Okay. So my site too is Etten Moors, so that's two for the site, and four for your and companions. 
4, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 in the pool. If only I was playing a Nazgul deck. 2, 4, <laughs> yeah. 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. All right. So I am going to go ahead and play. It almost doesn't even matter what order I do this in. Sorry. Almost doesn't matter what I play. Um, Orc Scout, yeah. so that's 2 plus 2 for the roaming. Uh, the roaming penalty for each other minion you play is minus 1. Play Orc Ambusher, so he costs 1 plus only 1 for his roaming penalty. Um, okay. And then I'm going to play Spies of Mordor to play Spot an Orc. Plays your support area. Each time the Fellowship moves during the regret phase, you may draw a card or two cards if you can spot a Sauron Tracker. And then I'm going to play Under the Watching Eye um, to play Exert a Sauron Tracker. So I will do that. Each time the fellowship moves, the free people's player must exert a companion. And uh, that's it. Um, and actually, while I'm thinking about it, um, one of the things that I forgot to mention uh, that, that was brought up to me before is that when you are setting up your 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 place, you probably don't want to do what I have done. I have a overhead light right above me, and as you can see, the glare is just right there, and you can't tell what that card is over the webcam. Um, so you may want to. Yeah. You may want to consider that uh, when you are building your uh, your setup. Um, I'm going to try and have to avoid this so little spot if I can. I, I'm fortunate enough I have a metal shelf right above me to where I use these tap lights. And I can adjust where those are to kind of change the uh, change the glare. Yeah. If I had thought about it, I could have maybe tried to pull a lamp into here to do something similar. But as it is, that's the, my only light source. Oh, no, I think it's, so. it's good enough. I mean, you're always gonna. There's always gonna be a little bit of a challenge. Right. That's, that's pretty minor. Um, okay. So, uh, how big are those guys? So, um, let's see. The orc scout is six two, and the orc ambusher is now five one with his exertion. Okay. Uh, so we'll move to um, archery. Yes, uh, yeah, so probably nothing on maneuver, so yeah, over to the... Maneuver. Yeah. Okay, did you get a bow on Aragorn already? No, just okay. Legolas. Okay, so just the one one shot. It's another 6-1 and 5-1. Okay, I'll have the 5 fight Legolas and the other one fight Aragorn. Okay. I got nothing, so that's two, one right after the other, if you don't have anything, so... Whatever, yeah, whatever. I don't have anything either. All right, yeah. So those those two are gone. That's definitely one nice thing about doing it physically is that in Gamp you have to go through laboriously and do every single thing in the in the exact order. In the in these sort of situations where neither of us have anything to play, it can be a little quicker sometimes to rail through that kind of thing. But um, yeah. yeah, pros and cons. Yeah, I think those are instances where we do save a little time, but of course overall this probably takes a little bit more time. Yeah, with all the shuffling and all the you know. Yep, exactly. Trying to pick up cards um, off the table, yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and move, and when I move, I remove two from Aragorn. Yep. And in fact, I think we forgot to do that last time, huh? One, yeah, two, I totally four, forgot. We forgot all five, about that yesterday. I just six, read that now. Seven, eight. And so... And your site three. So my site three... That's the best way to balance that Aragorn. Just make sure everyone forgets half the time. And see, it, it's actually a major concern with physical games. Is that it's it's the onus is on you to remember that your automatic triggers occur. Um, that's not something you have to worry about yeah. digitally nearly as much. It, same same with magic too. If you forget them, that's just that's them's the breaks, you know. So I've got Council Courtyard cost of zero. Uh, when the Fellowship moves from Council Courtyard, remove two. Um, let's see. So Aragorn removed two, but then you added four for the. Companions, yep. uh, so that's 2, 4, More 6, 8, 10, Three. 12. Uh, the site itself is 0. Oh, 0. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, 4, 8, 12. And did you take any cards into hand during the shadow phase, or was that just no. during the regroup phase? Yeah, just during the re regroup. I just did my reconcile, and that was it. Okay, so that betrayal doesn't hit you? Nope. Okay. All right. All right. And then, uh, just, just to be clear, the... Fellowship player doesn't reconcile, right? You're correct. Yes. Yeah. The okay. the I shadow players. That. Yeah. Shadow player is going to reconcile every regroup phase, w regardless of whether the fellowship player moves or not. And then the fellowship player has to decide between staying and reconciling or moving on with the resources they got. Perfect. So. All right. 
All right, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and play Orc Hunters. So he's a cost of three, roaming cost two, so that's five out. Um, so he's nine two. His skirmish ability, exert this minion to wounded character he's skirmishing. And then I'm going to play a Vile Blade on him. Um, Bearer must be a Sauron Orc. It makes him strength plus two by default, but then also Bearer is strength plus two while skirmishing a man or elf. So right now he is 11 two. Yes. So okay. we're down to six in the pool, and that's all I got. Oh, and then I, I did oh. have to exert... Oh, yes, you do. <laughs> so now the onus is on me to remember that. All right, every single time. It is. I, I'm cool with, yeah, dropping that down, though. Um, so which... Uh, so I get to choose? You get to choose, yeah, who exerts. Okay. Um, I'll just exert Frodo. Right on. Okay, so now you've got my 11 to... Oh, wait, no, sorry. Uh, so maneuver archery, so you've got one... One arrow. Yep. So that's he's yeah. So he, he's eleven right now, and he could be as much as thirteen if he if he skirmishes a man or elf. Well, he probably will be. I'll have him go up against Aragorn. Okay. So that's thirteen against. Um, so what have you got? Ten. Ten. Okay. With a sword, yeah. And I don't think he only gets. Uh, oh, and he's damage plus one, but that doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, not in this case. So yeah, I'll take a wound here. Okay, and that's that. That's that. Cool. All right, so we'll reconcile. So I'll go ahead and discard my guys, clear out the twilight pool. Mm. Sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, There's two more. Yeah, I'll keep that. One, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. Okay, so now we are over to my fellowship phase. Um, so let's let's lay it all out. So I've got Gimli's battle axe is going to be played on Gimli. So that's two. I've got. I'm going to put down two dwarf guards. Are those one apiece? Yes, those are one apiece. Okay. And then I'm going to stick a Dwarven Armor, which is zero, on one of them, so that he cannot be overwhelmed unless his strength is tripled. Okay. And then I'm going to play a Stairs... Yeah. <laughs> well, most of it's coming down, so it'll be all right in this case. Um, so Stairs of Cat's Eye Doom is zero. Place your support area. While a Dwarf skirmishes a Moria minion, that's Dwarf of Strength plus one. And then I've got a Dwarven Axe for another zero. I'm going to go ahead and put it on Farron here. Each time a player's minion loses a skirmish to bear, that player discards the top card of his or her draw deck. All right, so yeah. yeah, one, two, three, four. All right, that's it. So I'm going to go ahead and move now to the Entmores. So that's two for the site, and one, two, three, four, five for the companions. So it's two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven. Yep. Um, okay. Hmm. Well, what's your biggest over there? Is Gimli with an axe at eight? Gimli is at eight right now, yeah. Okay. Does he get any boost of any kind? Uh, no. His battle axe, uh, oh, sorry. So he's damage plus one from the battle axe, so he's damage plus two at the moment. Each time Gimli was a skirmish, he may wound an orc. Okay. All right. Um, let's go ahead and. A one, two, three, four, five for scavenger. Okay. And one, two, three for they are coming. Um, and that's all I got. Okay. So I've got an index card from our game last night, <laughs> or the, the the other day, where I've got scavenger already written on it. So there we are. So that's an eight one, right? Um, yep, eight one. And so I think, so we've got no archers, we've got no maneuver. Um, I'm going to put the scavenger here against Farron. Um, he's five, six, seven. And then while skirmishing an orc, Farron is strength plus two, so he's nine. And then while a dwarf skirmishes a uh, Moria minion, that dwarf is strength plus one, so he's ten against your eight. Dead scavenger. Yep. All right. Okay, so that's that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and move again. So 
feel free to reconcile okay. and so I have two, four, five. Two, four, six, eight in the pool. Okay. Yeah, I'll, you got a free move. I'm going to hold steady. Right on. Okay. In that case, I'm going to go ahead and reconcile through the pool. Yep. Draw I'll seven. As well. Four. Three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And thus, both fellowships make it to Rivendell unbloodied. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Disclaimer, right. this is not actually the best of decks. This is actually the the, the Gimli uh, starter from Minds of Moria that I added extra cards to. So just <laughs> throwing that out there. Don't Shanghai me for a terrible deck. Um, yeah, and this, this, in all honesty, is completely net deck. So this is a, the 2002 World Championships deck, but I think it had a different... I think it had Yurikai, but I put Marky Orcs instead. <laughs> so it's... Yeah. I love it. <laughs> World Championship shoebox. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On the flip side, yeah. I've been playing more or less consistently since the game's end, and he has a little yeah, bit so of the, the gameplay is going to be a loose and free over here, so not going to be great. Um, so let's see. Uh, first of all, I heal, right? Yep. Yeah. So heal up to five wounds from the sanctuary. Okay, um, I'll go ahead and say, what's that? Before I overstep on you guys, if I notice any cards being neglected or triggers that aren't being triggered, do you guys want me to speak up? Would that be helpful for you both? I know, I forgot my Spies of Mordor, so I wouldn't complain. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm totally fine with that. I mean, I, I need to, to knock some rust off, so I would appreciate it. Yeah, if you can. Okay, if I notice anything, I'll, I'll speak up. Right on. Okay. Um, so I'll play Philbert Bolger, one, and uh, then I'll play Old Toby for one, draw a card. Hmm, interesting. Um, I think that's gonna be all I'm gonna do. We'll move to your site four. All right. So that is Dwarf Elf Chamber. Um, it costs two, and you've got four companions. So that's two, four, six, eight in the pool. Dwarf Elf Chamber states when the Fellowship moves to Dwarf Elf Chamber, Gimli or two other companions must exert. Dang. Okay. So I gotta exert two dudes, huh? Yep. It'll be three with Under the Watching Eye. Oh, yes. Yeah, Under the Watching Eye. Um, Sam, Frodo, and. Who's the other lucky one? Probably Aragorn. It has to be three different. So no, no, no. So 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 what what's going to happen is Dread of Chamber is going to require two separate companions, but then Under the Watching Eye is separate. So it's, oh, okay. it's two transactions of two and one. If that makes okay. sense. So there's the two, and then I'll give Frodo another one. Gotcha. Right on. Um. All right. Yeah. Rock and roll. And this is actually one of the things that I really appreciate about um, the physical play is being able to actually move with the Twilight tokens around and kind of plan out, okay, exactly how much do I have? That's something that is very much missing in, in GIMP, I think. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and play... Oh, or this, did I miss the... Is Aragorn only when I move twice, right, to remove the Twilight? What does he say? I think you should remove. Yeah. Remove two. Yeah. <laughs> Alrighty then. Right on. I might have an anti Aragorn bias going that I'm not aware of. Yeah. Yep. Two left. Okay, so six total. Okay. You know, that torpedo is what I was going to do, so I hope you're happy. Um, let's just go ahead and get an Orc Hunters out then. So he's three minus two. And that's it. Okay. Uh, so. All right, I don't have any maneuver. So that's one archery wound then on the hunter. 
So he's 9 1. And he's, uh, what is he, a 9? Yeah. Uh, I'll go have him go up against Aragorn. Aragorn's a 10 right now? Yep. Okay. Dead orc. All right. So I get to reconcile, and then you get to choose if you're going to go again or not. Okay. And I don't get that fellowship. I don't get another fellowship phase, right? If you move, yeah. that's You're making a break for it, and, and you don't that, have a chance to put anything down. And then the doesn't trigger because I'm not moving during the fellowship phase, right? Correct. Yes. Okay. That's only on the first move. All right. That makes sense. Um, yeah, I'll go ahead and move again. All right, you may as well get your Site 5 out. This is a unique situation where in Fellowship of the Ring there are no Site 5s except for Bridge of Khazad Doom. So. Okay, um, yes, so my Spies triggers, so I get to draw a card. Uh, when you move during the regroup phase, I get to draw a card. And then we're going to have one, there are two, four, six for the Site. And then one, two, three, four for the Companions. 8, 10, 11. That's a little bit better. Yep. And then, uh, do I have to exert someone? Is that right? Yes, you have to exert for under the watching eye. Yep. Alright. Um, I will exert. Oh, yeah. Well. I'm going to go ahead and exert Aragorn. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and play an Orc Scout. So he's two plus two for roaming. Uh, roaming penalty for each Sour minion you play is minus one. So then I'm going to play Orc Inquisitor. So that's three. Roaming cost is only one. Uh, when you play this minion, you may make the Free People's Player discard a card at random from hand. So go ahead and do that. I'll All pick. Right. <laughs> yeah, go for it. Yeah, why don't we do uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. A goblin wall crawler. All right. And then I'm going to play an orc chieftain. He costs two with the roman cost of just one because of the scout. So that's three orcs out. We've got a 6-2, a 9-3, and a 7-2. Okay. Um, no maneuvers, so I'll throw the archery. So I'll put that down. Okay, so the biggest one is the 9, right? Yeah, 9-2 now. I'll have that go to Aragorn. Okay. Uh, next biggest is a 7, you say? Yes. Um, I'll have that go against Legolas. Okay. And then the other one's a what, 5? 6-2. Uh, 6-2. Six, two. Six, two. Uh, I will put it up against Frodo. Right on. So we'll uh, resolve Aragorn's first. Okay, so that's 10 against 9. I take a hit. Uh, then Legolas takes a wound. Yep, 7 to 6. Get another dice here. Uh, then we go to Frodo, 4 against 6. Yep. I'll take a wound. All right. That's it. Yep, that's that. So you can't move again. So we'll yep. get all these cleared out. All right. So I'll reconcile. I'll ditch the long bottom leaf. And let's see. One, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Five. It's one, two, three. Garbage. Okay, let's see here. So I'm going to go ahead and play a hand axe on Gimli, cost of zero. What's that? You're a sanctuary. Oh, yes. Well, oh, yeah, yeah. but I got nothing. So. <laughs> oh, Frodo have a wound? Yeah, that, that is a burden. So I use the, the same tokens as the Twilight for burdens, and then I've got... Does that actually show up differently on there? I've got a red one. I, I, I hadn't made the distinction. Yeah. I'm not sure which token that was. Okay. Yeah. And then I'm going to throw a hand axe on Farron for zero again. So they're both now dual wielding. 
And then I'm going to throw another Dwarven Armor on the other Dwarven Guard here, so neither one of these guys can be overwhelmed unless they're tripled. And all that costs you a whopping zero. Alright, so let's go ahead and move to Dwarf Chamber. So that's two for the site, two, four, five for the companions, and then my Gimli has to exert. Which Gimli is that? Is that Dwarf of the Mountain Race? Dwarf of the Mountain Race, yeah, it's the promo that comes with the starter deck. Oh, yes, yeah, so moving to an underground site, so the shadow number is minus two. So you get five. Oh, yeah. A whole five. Here, Moria, you can you can handle it. Um, let's go. Spend one on a goblin swarms. Um, let's go. And I am not roaming. Nope, not anymore. Runner and add one. For those watching, that's one out and then plus two because of its game text. So net one. We just make a twilight cost minus one, and then have no game text. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> really. Um, let's go ahead and play scimitar on the runner, and I'll draw a card. Okay. Hmm. Um, that's all I'll do for now. All right, so that runner is five plus two, right? So he's seven. Seven. Yep. Okay. So who's who's it gonna run him over? <laughs> I think we'll go with with uh, Gimli this time. So that's six, seven, eight, right. nine. Definitely. Oh wait, ten because of, there's a because of doom. So ten against your seven gets turned into a fine mist with the three wounds. Yep. And then I let's see. You know what? YOLO. We're going to go ahead and move. So that would be six, but because of uh, Gimli's text, it is only four for the site. And then five. Did, did you guys trigger the Gimli's battle axe? <laughs> I could have, I suppose, if there was anything else on the table to hit. Oh, I thought, uh, I thought that discarded cards. No, no, that's... Oh, in fact, no, Farron's does the Dwarven Axe. Uh, Gimli, Gimli's Battle Axe um, wounds orcs when you win. I'll be over here. <laughs> no, I mean, if it had been Farron... I mean, I th in fact, I think I've had Farron win once, and I already forgot. But um, that's fine. So I have... Nah, let's see. 2, 4, 14, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. Yep. Okay. Oh, and I need to reconcile. Yep. One, 3, 4, 5. Uh, ditch that. Six, seven, eight. Okay. Um, first I'll go host of thousands. I'm gonna set my hand down here. Host of the thousands to play. So let me see what I got in my hand here. Yeah, that's fine. Um, host of thousands to play the runner to add one. Um, then I'm going to do it again. And on camera. Um, let's go with a scavenger for three. Bringing back the scimitar. I'll put it on the scavenger and draw a card. Okay. Um, let's see here. Oh, I'm sorry. That will spin my discard. I played two of them. Um, so let's see. What do we got here? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, twelve. Two, four, six, Might eight, as well ten, twelve. Yep. grab the Balrog from my deck, right? Oh, just may as well, right? <laughs> yeah. That's what the dwarf guards are there for. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so that'll be eight, right? Loyal speed bumps. Oh, yeah. Yep. Two, four, six, eight. eight. Shuffle. I think you hit me with, with 
this last time, so I've got a card that says Balrog on it somewhere. Um, there we go. Okay. Then I will play... Let me look at my discard then. Yeah. Okay. And then I'll take three more for a marksman. For a what? A oh, goblin uh, marksman. marksman. Yes. So one left in the pool. So marksman, Balrog, scavenger with a scimitar, and a runner. And the marksman and is then... strength seven, seven one. Uh, seven one with yeah. archery. Yep. All right. So I take one arrow from the marksman. We'll put it over here on Frodo. Let's see, let's see. I did not get my Gimli's Helm out in time. So we are gonna... Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So the Balrog is right... Uh, the stream died. Oh, what? Oh. On Twitch? Side. Discord side. Discord side. Oh yes, my Discord just... Okay, hang on. Let me make sure that my Discord isn't crashing. Because we might lose audio here if that's going on. Ugh. Quick, eat Frodo while he's not looking. <laughs> Balrog is hungry. He's sleeping for like 3,000 years. Just yeah. pop, pop okay. it in there. Plenty of energy. Huh, yeah, that's weird. I will reshare this on Discord. So now, alright, there. So now those of you that aren't watching on Twitch can see it on Discord. Ah, and now I've left my mouse cursor in the wrong place. Oh, curse this setup. Go. I hope that all of you out there appreciate what I'm doing because I will probably not do this again. <laughs> for my my setup at home and for how much I like the digital era, it's just not worth it to me. But I understand that not everyone has the same same opinion. So alright, let's see. We're gonna, we're gonna have Balrog. That's good to know. I'll have Balrog go on the dwarf guard. I will have Scavenger, who's 10, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay, you will go against Farron. We'll have the Marksman go against Gimli. And we'll have the Runner... Oh, we'll have the Runner go up against the other Dwarf Guard. Alright, so we will do the Balrog first. 17 against 4. I'm afraid the Dwarf Guard just can't handle it. So that is a dead Dwarf Guard in my dead pile. Okay. And then we'll just do we'll do the scavenger here. Um, so that is eight plus two is ten. Farron is five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten while skirmishing an orc, and then plus one while skirmishing a Moria minion. So that is eleven. Okay. So I'll, scav uh, I'll actually he doesn't win a skirmish, so I can't. He dies. Okay. Never yeah. Mind. So he dies. Yeah. Thinking too hard. And then. Gimli here up against the Marksman, so he is 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 against the 7, so that's a dead Marksman. And then with Gimli's Battle Axe, I can wound an Orc, so we're going to hit the Runner. Does he have 2 health or 1? Yep. Just the 1? Okay. Alright, and now we deal with the Balrog, and the Balrog can go against... Let me think. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9... I can avoid getting overwhelmed. I don't think I want to ditch the Dwarf Guard just yet. I don't have enough companions in this deck. So I think we're going to have him go against Farron. Okay. That's five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, yeah, so power against Farron. He's damaged with one, so I take two wounds there. Yep. And that's that. 
Alright. Sound good. Alright, so both of us can reconcile. Let me scoot all these things over. Okay. I'll ditch that. So one, two, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Face up there. My bad. <clears throat> About that scavenger. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Secret attack. By the way, I really like your sleeves. Those are those are really nice. Uh, yeah, like are those from like the Middle Earth yeah. CCG or something? Like, or uh, was it just? Yeah, they're from. Uh, it says Middle Earth Enterprise. FFG, I think it's like something fantasy games from 2012. Oh, yeah. oh, Fantasy Flight, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I have the the One Ring one that they did too. Yeah. Okay. So we're on to my fellowship? Yep. Cool. Um, let's throw a flaming brand on Aragorn. Boo. Dude, nice. Yeah, thank you. That's pretty sweet looking foil. Um, add one for Aragorn's bow. Ah, great. Um, let's play. A. Yeah, that might work. Um, play. Well, actually, I'm gonna discard old. Oh, yeah, I have to discard it from play. So I'm gonna play old Toby, my third one. Draw a card. Uh, then I will discard one using Aragorn's pipe here. Okay. So discard, discard pipe leaf possession and spot X pipes to heal X companions. So I spot one, two, three, four. So I'll heal four companions. Hold up, hold up. Four pipes? Uh, you should have uh, only... Proto pipe, Aragorn's pipe, and two... Oh, wait, never mind. Yeah, two. yeah, so two, yeah. Um, so I'll heal Legolas and Aragorn. Um, and then, what can I do with Frodo's pipe? Same deal, but multiple oh, yeah. multiple heals on okay. one Frodo segment, yeah. Okay, um, let's go, we'll also play Gandalf, friend of the Shire folk. Um, for four, and then I'm going to play... Hmm, yeah, I'll do that. Uh, sleep Caradris for three, discarding all conditions. Oh. We hardly knew ye. So then I'll get rid of that. And, well, actually, it doesn't count the shadow, right? It, so, it, yeah, it, yeah it, it only counts what's active. So my shadow and your fellowship. So I lose my betrayal. Mm-hmm. And I don't think any yeah conditions don't go on. Some some do some do. Um, I think all mine are just possessions. It looks like. Yeah, and I think that's 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 part of the point with the pipe deck is that you you don't rely on on conditions, so you can just use sleep to nuke everybody else's. And yeah, that's cool. definitely a legit strategy. Um, okay, so now that I've added all that. Twilight, I'm going to go ahead and move to your site six. I don't think I have any ways to heal anymore, do I? I mean, you you can repeatedly use the Aragorn's, um, Aragorn's pipe if you want. That's not a one-time thing. you still got two more pipe weed. Right. Oh, all... yeah. That's right. Yeah, let's, let's do that. I'll discard... Wait, wait. Is that... this? Oh, this is a pipe weed, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So both of those are okay. pipe weeds, yeah, so... You can do that again to so, heal yeah, two more. Use, um, Aragorn's pipe and spot. So after I discard it, I have to spot after the discard, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So that's just okay. the two so pipes, now, Aragorn's pipe and Frodo's pipe. So that's two heal heals. Sam and yep. Frodo. Nice. 
Right on. And then I'll shoot. I'll do it one more time. And can I do the same two, or does it have to be two different? Nope. E each time they're independent, so you can uh, the second time so you can do the same people. I'm asking if uh, yeah, you have to. Oh, I got you. Right, right. So if you, if you actually look at the wording between Aragorn's pipe and Frodo's pipe, Aragorn's pipe says heal X companions. Frodo's pipe says heal a companion X times, and those are distinct. Oh, gotcha. mm -hmm. Well, I'll, I'll still. Well, no, I won't do that. I'll keep the. I'll keep that. Okay. Keep that. Right on. Yeah, you're moving to a sanctuary. I think. I think yeah. Uh, Remove the wounds here. All right. Yep. So let's go ahead and move to your site six. All right. So that is. Valley of the Silver Load. Oh, yeah, remove two for Aragorn. Yeah, remove two for Aragorn, and then add three for the site, and then add one, two, three, four, five for your companions. It's actually quite a beefy site six. I don't normally get that much on site six. And what's your site six say on it? Uh, so it says, well, when the Fellowship moves to the Valley of the Silver Load, each Hobbit companion may heal. So you oh, can heal them once. Yeah. Right on. Two, four, oh, six, move from eight. it or to it? Uh, two. So yeah, yeah, right now. Two. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I just one heal is all I get. Yeah. Okay. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, fifteen. Yeah. And I'm finally no longer roaming. So let's see. Let's see. Let's see. All right. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and play Orc Assassin first. He is 6-2. Um, assignment phase. And how, how many Twilight is he? He's two. Yeah. Um, he's got an assignment action. Spot two Hobbit companions to make the Free People's player assign a Hobbit to skirmish this minion. Um, and then I'm going to play Holland Snarler, cost of four. Tracker Fierce to play Spot a Sauron. Sir. Oh, shoot. Wait, no, I can't do that. Hold up. I'm going to have to do this in a different order. So let me put those four back. So I'm going to play The Hunt is Up. Is a search card to play Exert a Sauron Tracker. So I'm going to exert the Orc Assassin over here. So that costs three. Let's get that out. You nuked my support area. I was used to having search cards out. Then I will play the Holland Snarler now that I can spot a search card. Um, so he costs four. When you play this minion, you may spot a Sauron search card and X wounds on a companion except the Ring Bearer to add X, but I think you just healed everybody up except the Ring Bearer, so I can't even use that. Yep. And then I'm going to play Orc Inquisitor, cost of three. When you play this minion, you may make the Free Wills player discard a card at random from hand. Alright. One, two, three, four. Three. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Three works. You get a scavenger. Yeah. Right on. And then I will play Orc Chieftain, cost of two. So there's now one left in the pool. Mm. We've got so a six um six, eight, nine, seven. Let me rearrange those. We got a six, seven, eight, nine, actually. <laughs> six, seven, eight, nine. The okay. eight the eight um, is fierce. Uh, well, yeah. So first, what is that exerted? That exerted guy. What's his uh, vitality? Uh, two. So he's down to one right now. He's he's one hit point away. So I'll go ahead. Well, I'll exert Legolas to pick him off. Okay. Oh, he's a six though, right? He's six. Yeah. Oh, okay. I won't do that. I'll just throw two archery at you. Okay. So I'm gonna put one in the Inquisitor. And one of the chieftain, I suppose. Okay. Um, so your biggest, I'll have Oregon, uh, yeah, Aragorn fight the biggest one. Yeah, so that's eight against ten, right? Okay. Uh, eleven. Well, yeah, eleven. Eleven. Brand. Now this got flaming brand. That's right. Um, then I will have. I'll just do this. Uh, nine. Here, eight um, against Gandalf, seven on Legolas, and then the last one's how big? Uh, we have a six, seven, eight, nine. Six. That will go on Frodo. 
Right on. All right, so we'll resolve Gandalf's first. Gandalf is a nine, I believe. Because he's strength one for the man, the elf, and the hobbit, right? So he starts at six, seven, eight, nine. Yep. yep. He's a nine. Yep, nine against eight. So that's a wound on my Snarler. Um, we'll go to Aragorn. Who is a lot. Yep, yeah, he's a big boy. Eleven against, that was the nine that got hit. Is he damage plus one with oh, a sword? Yeah. He is, huh? Um, I believe he is. Ranger sword, yep, he is. Yep. Okay, so that's a dead Inquisitor. Uh, letting this will take a wound. Yep. And Frodo will also take a wound. Right on. And then the eight is fierce, so you get to fight him again, or you um, get to him go up against <laughs> You get to beat him again. So yeah, that's a dead, that's a dead Snarler. All right. So now I get to reconcile, and you get to figure out whether you're moving or not. One, two, three, four. Um, I think I'm gonna hang out at the sanctuary. Six. All right. So let's a good turn, Red. You did a good job of getting your wounds there. Yeah, things things could have gone a little bit differently, maybe if he had left it all wounded. But yeah, that that pipe deck does a good job of. Yeah, I I know it takes a little while, but all right, it's coming back to me uh, faster than I thought it would. <laughs> it's like riding a bike. Same. It is. I hundred percent agree. It is the perfect game. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and play Gloin. So he costs two. For each dwarven tail you can spot, he's strength plus one. We have one in play at the moment. The stairs of Kaza Doom. Okay. And then I'm gonna play dwarf guard. I guess he got better after the Balrog ran him over. Yeah. And then I'm gonna play Gimli's helm on Gimli. Nice. That's a zero. And then I think that's it. Yep. So we'll go ahead and move. So that is one, two, three for the site, and a whopping two, four, six for the companionship. So that's two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve you've got available. Alright. Cool. You get a heal with the site. Ah yes, and so Frodo gets to heal. Um, and what is this? Oh, the the site is the, the Hobbit heal thing. Yeah, each okay. Hobbit gets to heal. All right. Okay. Hmm. Well, let's play a runner and add one. Uh, I'm gonna give him a scimitar and draw. I'll play Post of Thousands. Or a Gavinger for three. Replaying the Scimitar on the Scavenger. Drawing a card. Playing an Armory. <laughs> Day late, dollar short. Yeah. I've only ever had one physical copy of Goblin Armory. Ever. I you know, and I was I was telling uh, I was telling him that we uh, I, I would go on eBay over the years, over the last you know eighteen years on occasion I would be like, I should get some more armories. So I have the play set in here and then I have a foil that I don't play. Oh yeah. Yep. Well, the card card is just busted. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see here. Let's go ahead and play... I'm going to play another scimitar on... Oh, so hang on. Scavenger. So the way that it works with items is that you can only have one copy oh, of... One yeah, yeah. So that, that's one hand weapon, so you can't dual wield unless the card itself says... Both of my hand axes here say that, that you can. That makes but... complete sense. Um... Let me think here. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, let's go to Cave Troll. 
I'd say that's a, that's a, that's a trait. Well, if I can't do a wield, then you get to eat a troll. And he, yeah, he's a troll. He can't hold a scimitar, unfortunately. Nope. So, let's see. What, what, what strength is that? Is he 14 or 13? Uh, 15, 4. Damage 15, plus 1, 4. Force. Right. Champion of Solaris on Twitch says, this looks very good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure if he's talking about the webcam setup or if he's talking about how bad I'm about to get flattened, but... um. Everything. He's talking about everything. Let's see here. Let's see. Let's see. You're bleeding through a little bit. I don't really get to use my uh, swarms here. I keep getting killed. Okay, so I'm going to put the troll on Gimli. I'm going to put the scavenger on Farron. And I'm going to put the runner on Gloin here. Alright, All right, so we're going to do Gimli first. So he is 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 with Stresor Keza Doom. I'm going to play Axe Strike, making him 13. Make a Dwarf Strength plus 2 or plus 3 if bearing an axe. Nice. And then I'm going to play Flurry of Blows. Make a Dwarf Strength plus 2 or plus 4 and damage plus 1 if bearing two hand weapons, which he is. So that's 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And he's damage plus 3. Damage plus 3. Oh, take so, that control. With one swipe of my axe. And then every time he wins, he gets to wound an orc. So we're going to wound that runner. Um, yeah, runner dies, sure. And then we're left with Farron, uh, so that he's 5, strength plus 2 while fighting an orc. So that's 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11 with the stairs. So 11 against your 10. Yep, you got it. At the end, says damage plus 1, take the head off the troll. Yeah. <laughs> Turn him into a fine mist. I usually only do that with, with orcs, but it feels good to tell the troll to heck off. I thought that dwarf guard just kind of sauntered out of Moria and had to just step him by the bow rod and thought he was going by a troll. <laughs> that, 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 that would have been, uh, you know, out of the frying pan into the, into the, into the belly. So, but that was not the case. Um, let's see. I need those... His heels, yeah, I think. Did, so uh, I'm gonna. Miss any uh, axe discards on this one? Axe discards? Oh, um, yes, dwarven axe. So yeah, he won. He won one. So discard the top card of your deck. Oh, you discard the top card? Yeah. Mill okay. one. Bohemir. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and stay here, stay put. So I'm gonna draw five to reconcile. Okay, I'll go ahead and reconcile as well. Six, seven. One, two, three. Okay. All right. So fellowship. Yep, your fellowship. I can heal up to three wounds. Right? Up to up to five, but yeah. Oh, up to five. Okay. Sweet. Um, I'll add one for sting. Uh, which which Frodo is that? Is that the one that makes cost less? Oh yeah, cost of each artifact possession. Yep, so zero. And then he is. I'm the architect of my own destruction. And remove one for each orc. Oh, wow. <sighs> okay. I like that. That's fellowship or regroup. Nice. All Good right. old OP sting. Um. Okay. So I'll move your site seven. Alrighty, so that is Anduin Wilderland. Um, so that's six, two, four, six, and then you have five people, so that's two, four, five, giving me two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven. And the Anduin Wilderland says, while the fellowship is at Anduin, Anduin Wilderland, skip the archery phase. Okay, and that was, let's see, one, two, one, two, three, four, five for the fellowship. How much for the site? Uh, six. Three, six, so okay, it should be so a six and five, eleven. Yep. Cool. All right. Okay. Um. 
Well, Kat, you're being called out by Champion on Twitch. Man, all the choke. <laughs> yeah, all all of my stuff. Yeah, for zero. Yeah, I can't I can't necessarily complain about one free sting, considering how many free uh free weapons I've got here. To be honest, I find oh, philosophic I removed too. <sighs> <laughs> Um. Yeah, I feel like philosophically there shouldn't be any fellowship cards that cost zero unless they have another cost like an exertion or something. Because yeah, it's I don't know. I feel like that should be part of the give and take. But whatever. Um. Let's see. So I'm gonna play orc assassin for two. Nobody's roaming anymore. Feels good. I'm gonna play another orc assassin for two more. I'm gonna play an. Orc Ambusher for one, an Orc Ambusher for one, and then let's go ahead and stick a Vile Blade on this Assassin here for one. So what that leaves us with is two fives, a six, and an eight. And the the eight and the six have an ability, which I'm going to use in the assignment phase. We got nothing in Maneuver, we got nothing in Archery because it's being skipped at Anduin Wilderland. So yep. I'm going to so I'm gonna use the ability for both of them. It says spot two Hobbit companions to make the Free People's Player assign a Hobbit to Skirmish's minion. So you get to assign two Hobbits to fight these two guys. Okay. Um, and they're both fives? One is six, one is eight. One is six, one is eight. So I have the eight. I have to assign one of them to fight a Hobbit? Uh, so I, I, I'm going to be performing the action twice. So oh, okay. on the first one, you have to assign this one, and then you have to assign the other one. So... Okay. Basically, I'm yeah. yeah. Uh, I'll have the eight go to Frodo and the other one to Sam. Okay. And then the other two are fives. Yes. So. Uh, Aragorn and Gandalf. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll do uh, Aragorn first. Okay. Dead orc. Squish. And do Gandalf next. Another squish. Wizard squish. Um, and then we'll go to Sam, and I have a, a six, is that right? Yes. Six against okay, two three. So I'll use Philbert Bulger and exert him twice to cancel it. Is Philbert Bulger for a fierce skirmish or for any... It just says skirmish. Exert a hobbit companion twice to cancel a fierce skirmish. Uh, to, ca to, to cancel a fierce skirmish. So it has to be the second... Oh, fierce skirmish. Yeah, so it's, yeah, only, yeah, so it's okay. only with fierce skirmishes. Well, in that case, Sam's a goner. Hi, Sam. Yahoo. So that goes in the dead pile, not your discard pile. Um, oh, so, like, I, I've right. I've got the uh, dwarf guard up here. So what I'll I'll signify that as sideways under my discard. Sure, that works. Nice uh, and compact. That's what I do. Like in Magic, you do exile. I usually do sideways for exile. Sweet. Um. So. Sam died, and now we're on to Frodo. So three, four, five, six for Frodo against a six. Eight. As well. Eight. Against an eight. Yeah, he's got a vile blade. Do you need damage plus one. Nope. Okay. So just the so one. I word. will lose that skirmish and take the damage. Right on. Um, we got two survivors, eh? Uh huh. Well, that's not cool. So I'll go ahead and reconcile while you're considering what you're going to do. One, two, three, four. Oh, let's see. Yeah. Oh, five. Here, six, One, seven. Two, three, um, I'll just five, pause six. there. Six. Five, six. Seven, Hang on. Eight. Sounds good. I'll discard and reconcile. One, two, three, four, five, six. So seven, all eight. this goes and discard. Okay. Clear the twilight pool. All right, so we are at a sanctuary. I'm gonna go ahead and clear three out. Yep. So I'm gonna go ahead and play a dwarven axe on Gloin. So let's spread these guys out a little bit more. Hope these dwarves have a lot of pockets. Yeah. I'm gonna play make light of burdens to my. Um, to my support area, so it gives me a maneuver action. Um, exert a dwarf companion and discard the top three cards of your draw deck to discard either a shadow condition from a dwarf or a weather condition. Um, okay. And that's that. So let's go ahead and move. So we got six for the site, six 
and one, two, three, four, five, six, then for the companions, giving you a 13, I believe. All right. And that's, so your site seven, okay. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, twelve, thirteen, yep. Okay. I forget. Um, the archery phase during that last round. We did not do the archery phase. We skipped over it because of the uh, text of Andrew and Sure. Yeah. Good. Okay. Um, let's go play another armory. <laughs> uh, runner to add one. Let's do two for a wall crawl player. Let's do three for a scavenger. Get a scimitar back. Right, so two for the wall crawler, three and for a scavenger. Okay. On the scavenger, and I'll draw the scimitar. And then the armory should add. Ah, uh, yes. Oh, yep. yep, adds two. Add one. Or you only have one out, or do you have two? You've got two. So each one triggers independently. So you add. One per you armory. Play it work weapon. Add one. I only have one weapon so far. Right, right. But you played one, but you have two armories, and so each armory triggered off of the. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're cooking now. All right. That's, that's where the breaking comes in. If you get enough of those out, then you infinite twilight. Um, another scavenger, and I'll add two more because I think I have another scimitar here. Just three. Two for the thing. Right. Yep. Put it on the old scavenger. Draw a card. What are the stats of the wall crawler? Wall crawler is a 6 1 unless we're underground. Then he's uh, 8 1, and then he has. He takes one away from the archery. Yeah, okay, gotcha. Uh, okay, and then I'll play Scimitar on the runner. Oops, let's add two more. Add, card, <laughs> add two more. And I'll play another scimitar on the wall crawler. Draw card. Add two more. Um, I'll then I'll pay six for two marksmen. Clumping up. Uh, and then I'm gonna use they are coming, discard three cards from my hand, play an orc from my discard pile. Discard these. Played so much, I need another index card. Um, what do I want to get here? I'm out of other deals. Probably get a marksman, I guess. Yeah, we'll get another marksman. Three. All right. Ooh, unfortunately, those marksmen are not going to be super effective at this site, unfortunately. Oh. <laughs> Woo! All right, yeah, that's that's three whole wounds I get to ignore. That's nice. Well, I don't, I, to be fair, I think I had, I could have played a scavenger to get the extra point of strength, but that's about it. Yeah, we'll stick with what we got here. Um... All right. Yeah, that's what I got. Okay, so let me, let me let me go over this. Make sure that I got it all. We have a scavenger with a scimitar. We have a wall crawler with a scimitar. We have a runner with a scimitar. We have another scavenger with a scimitar, and then we have three marksmen. Yep. So yeah, we have four scimitars total: goblin runner, two scavengers, and a wall crawler, and then three marksmen. Gotcha. Okay. Whew. And some marksmen who forgot their bows. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they left him at home. They're fired. I think you mean gashed? That's a... That <laughs> orc language joke. I will never have another one in my entire life. That's the only one. Actually, gonna win a skirmish with an orc? Maybe. <laughs> could be, could be we'll fun. see. We'll see. We'll see what Gimli has to say about that. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yep.
Okay, so I think I'm going to do a Marksman on Frodo, a Wallcrawler on Gimli, Scavenger on Farron, Marksman on Gloin, Scavenger on the Dwarf Guard with an armor, Marksman on the other Dwarf Guard, which means you get to assign your runner to whoever you want. Uh, send it to Frodo. As is tradition. Oh, wait a second. So, I have a maneuver action that I was going to use and forgot about um, before I signed everything. So, let's go ahead and do it then. Here lies Balan, son of Fundun. Exert an orc. Or, sorry, sorry. Exert a dwarf to wound two orcs or wound one orc twice. So, I think I'm, I'm going to exert Kimli. And I am going to hit. Well, we know where they're going to be assigned, but let's go ahead and hit the runner and the marksman on Frodo. Um, I'll dump both armories to prevent. Okay. Y'all don't necessarily know because you didn't see the first game we did, but this was exactly how I lost because he blocked everything I did with Gimli to stop Frodo from getting overwhelmed, and I had, I had, I had, I had nothing else. So, yeah, something like that. Okay, so let's go ahead and do Gimli first. So he's 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 against the 8 of the wall crawler. So the wall crawler gets yep. misted. And then Gimli's battle axe allows me to wound an orc. So I'm going to go ahead and wound the marksman that is on Frodo. And I don't think you have anything to counter it now. So dead marksman. Nope. All right, so we'll go to Farron. Farron is 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 against the 10 of the Scavenger. So that's yep. a dead Scavenger. Okay. And you mill the top of your deck. One card? Yeah, one card. They're coming. And then we got Gloin. He is 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 for his text against the 8 of the Marksman. Or the 7 of the Marksman, you mean? 7 of the Marksman? Yeah, sorry. Yep, dead marksman. Dead marksman. He's also got a dwarven axe, so mill another card. Mill a ancient chieftain. Hmm. And then we've got the dwarf guard up against the scavenger, so he is four up against ten. Is that correct? Yep. All right. Um, so he doesn't get overwhelmed because of the armor, um, but we'll take yep. one hit, and you finally have a guy win a skirmish. I'll uh, stack them on the swarms. Okay. And then the other marksman, seven against four. Uh, so again, I take another loss. So your marksman won. Um, stack him as well. And then we have the Frodo. He's four up against five, six, seven. So he takes a hit from the runner. Okay, I'll stack as well. All right. Whew. How much twilight was left? Three? Three, was that? Three yeah. twilight. And one of the ones stacked on your thing is a scavenger, right? Yep, scavenger, marksman, and runner. He's thinking about it. Yeah, he is. But at the same time, that's <laughs> that's rough when you've got both a runner and a scavenger on there. Like that's I have that zero just zero cards in hand, so I'll be done. <laughs> no armories. Ah, uh, no armories. That's true. Um, yeah. You know what? All right, I'm, I'm gonna stay. I'm gonna stick around. Too big of a risk. He's all set up. One, two, three, four, five, six. Right. Reconcile. Seven, eight. I just thought of a funny card idea. What's that? Your reconcilable differences, where somehow you can prevent the player from drawing during your group phase. Just oh, that's nasty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. Spot an elf and a dwarf in the fellowship to prevent a player from reconciling. I don't know. Something zany. There's a possibility there. After they reconcile, make him discard one or something. Like. Yeah. 
All right, so we're back to your fellowship. Cool. Um, I'll go ahead and discard old Toby to heal Frodo. Okay. Um, I'll play Bounder for one. Good old Bounder. Um, yeah, why not? Um, the Trail of Isengard for one. Uh, yeah, we lost. Still going. What happened to oh, my yeah. video feed? Darn it. <laughs> my phone's battery died. Alright, give me a second. I'm out of a Star phone. Right, right, yeah. Okay, well, this highlights perhaps a weakness of playing over webcam is that if you have tech failures or you were to lose network or anything like that, that can inhibit your ability yeah, to play and that's, <laughs> and that's another reason why and you know it's easy to manipulate i'm sure but i just anytime that happens i just put my hand on the on the play field and just wait it out makes sense only give the opportunity to cheat to your opponent that's yeah. uh... <laughs> exactly <laughs> um okay right. well I, I think we're back and i think we should be good that's... Apologies to anybody watching. We're now now our, our screens are now flipped. We're in opposite positions of where we were before. But that's <laughs> ah well. So I'll go ahead and move. Okay. Um. So we got one, two, three, four, five. That was good. And then nine for the site. Nine, two, four, six, eight, nine. And this is shores of. Uh, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen. Yep. This is Shores of Nin Hithel Hithuel. Uh, it gives me a shadow action. Uh, spot five orc minions. Oh. In any case, it's, it's good to, to to see how it plays out. Yeah. So. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah you just got to stick around and wait and. Sacrifice. Yeah, and, and I mean, I I, I am pretty uh, pretty happy with OBS Ninja here. Just how easy it is to disconnect, reconnect, and there hasn't been any problems with, uh, you know, Rad hasn't had to do anything. He's not even the one that made the the chat room here, but he was able to. Yeah, and and another point to that too is that's that's all part of the streaming process. So if you're just playing a pickup game, you don't have to worry about any of that. You True. Connect up through audio, video, and Discord, and just play your game. And it really is just dependent on whatever device that you're using for a webcam that's staying online. So right. if you're using your phone, chances are you'll be fine. Yeah. Okay, so let's get into actually playing this. Um... Okay, so just make sure we're on the same page. It's uh, Cat Shadow Phase and Rad just moved to Site 8, right? Yes, giving me this yep. boodle of Twilight to deal with. So I'm going to put the Orc Chieftain down for two. Um, and then I'm going to play Thin and Stretched. So this is where we get into our proxy switches. So I had that hanging out with just with the uh, the index card. So I'm going to switch the Thin and Stretched from my proxy pile over here. Um, so it says to exert a Sauron Orc, then plays on the ring bearer, add a burden at the end of each turn during which bearer was not assigned to a skirmish and another companion was. So on Rad's side, he's going to have to probably do something similar to this. Here I've got an example blade tip. Yeah, I just took a index card and folded it over. And I actually found that it, it works pretty perfectly when you take a, a card and line it up with the edge. It just goes under just like a, a regular card, even though it's a little, a little thicker there. Um, so he'll have to do something to attach it, an index card or something to... Put a sheet of paper there, thin and stretched on it. Okay. They're on Frodo then? Yep. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and... Do you have anybody with wounds? You're fully healed. Dang it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use the Hunt Up. It says... Oh, no, never mind. I can't use that now. Um, I don't know if your video is streaming. Um, my video is not streaming? Can you see me okay? I, I see oh, problems. it's not on Discord. I see what happened. Oh, boy. Let's see here. I, I, I think I see it up there on Twitch, um, but it's just here on Discord that it's... Um, it looks like it's just a screenshot. It's like, so you don't see my, my, my screen shaking at all over there? No, no, no. Uh, Kat, your, your screen, your image is coming through just fine. Uh, rad. It looks like... Your video has stopped. 
there. Oh, okay. there we go. Okay, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, there we go. Yeah, somehow I think. Okay, so I, I had to hit play on his stream to make sure that. Uh, okay. Good call. I mean, I, I, I was looking up and I wasn't willing to say, well, I don't see a paper with an stretched on it, right. but I, I figured there was something I missed. <laughs> I, I read your phone. I was like, I'm getting the same information. <laughs> okay, well. Um, and you, you do have, you have 12 Twilight remaining after, because we had the Aragorn's move. Yeah. Okay, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Yeah, Aragorn's move pulls two out. But oh, and you moved. You actually moved to eight. Um, yeah. And unfortunately, that's all I got. All right. Um, archery. Um. Yeah. Turns him into a pincushion. So that's that. I will not be spotting five orcs to prevent you from moving again. All right. Let's let's do this. Ta-da. What's your sight nine? So my sight nine is Toll Brandier. Shadow, play up to three trackers from your discard pile and end your shadow phase. Yeah, okay. All right, so we are adding... All right. Uh, woo, all right. So you have five companions, right, still? One, two, yep, three, four, one, five. Three, four, five. Five. And then the sight is, is nine. I'm going to pull more out. One, two, three, four. Four, four, six, eight, nine. Let's see if I can't pull something off. Four cards in hand, but that sight's gonna help. Twenty-six. So I'm gonna discard the other copy of Thinnest Dress. One, two, three, four, five. So I'm gonna draw. One, two, three. Okay. That's a disgusting hand. It's all full of dwarves. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do <laughs> do Toll Brandier's ability. Uh, play three trackers from my discard pile. Okay. So what's the beefiest trackers I can get? I'm pretty sure they're all wimpy. That's the brand new interaction. Hmm. Yeah, all these trackers are trash. Um, let's go ahead and bring him out. Did I did I get hit with anything from conditions here? Nope, <laughs> you nuked everything. Uh, that, that 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 did that. So we'll play a Holland Snarler. So that's four. We'll play Orc Scout. That's two. We'll play Orc Assassin. That's two. I almost don't even need to count, but here we are. So that's an eight, a six, and a six. The eight is fierce. Okay. Uh, to archery. To archery. So I'm going to take these ones. I think I'll put it on the Snarler and the Assassin. Why not? Okay. And then we're at the assignment um, phase. I have an assignment action, actually. Okay. The hunt That's is up. Different. Spot a companion except the ring bear with X wounds to play a Sauron tracker from your draw deck. It's Twilight Cost is minus X. Discard this condition. So take a look I, don't my have any, I don't have any wounds. So X will just be zero in that case. So um, I, I'm going to have to pay him full price, which I don't particularly oh, care. Oh, I got you. Yep, I hear you. And would you look at that? This is the best we can do. So <laughs> another orc scout. I guess I'll shuffle these six cards. Would you like to see a cut? I uh, hear all that. <laughs> Smaller than my hand at this point. Um, One, two, three, four, seven. We're both pretty heavy players. The uh, as far as how many cards we're chunking down here on the deck. Um, okay. Yeah, I think I'm thirty-five apiece split. Um, so you got so it. What are the what are the toughness again? So you, you've got you've got an eight, six, six, six. Uh, eight on Aragorn. Okay. Uh, Six on Gandalf, six on Legolas, and six on Frodo. I'm down to four, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that'll work. Okay. Let me get these ready, I guess. And we'll do Aragorn first. Okay. 
That's a dead wolf. Dead work, I should uh, we'll say. We'll do Gandalf, who is... We got a hobbit, elf, and a man, so he's still a nine. Nine against six, so that's a dead scout. Uh, Legolas is a six, so I'll take a wound. Okay. Uh, Frodo is a six, so I'll take wound there. All right, and that's a win for you. Sweet. No sight ten. No sight ten. No. Throw the ring into the fire. All right. The falls of Raros. Yeah. <laughs> Going home. Well, this was um. So, to all of you who watched the the stream and its two impromptu parts. Um, I hope that this shows off everything that you were hoping to find out. Um, you know, just with a with a webcam and with with a computer that doesn't crash, you'll you'll be just fine. Um, although you don't even need the computer, the only reason that I had the the computer hooked up, like you said, was for the streaming. But most of the time, you can just install the Discord app and then have it use your your camera. Um, and so there, there's only the one point of failure there. Um, I'm pretty sure that this is in, in my case the the failure is a combination of too many things running, too many streams running, and something somewhere barfed. But for most people, they shouldn't have that problem if they're if they're not actually bothering to stream or record or anything like that. Um, yeah. So yeah, yeah. If you're just connecting up, it should be as easy as Discord and one app does it all for you. Yeah. So if you are looking to try this out for yourself, um, we will make sure that uh, when we post this on YouTube, that there will be links in the description for. Um, uh, the Discord server that Red Hazard has put together. And if this uh, starts to build any momentum, if we start to see a lot of activity on this, then we will absorb his server into the, the player's council server, and we will get them, we, we will get the same layout of, um, uh, you know, voice servers and, or voice channels and video channels and so on for people to, to utilize there. And we can, we can all stand under the same umbrella. Um, if you have any questions about this, uh, feel free to post it on Facebook um, or on Discord or on Twitch here, and uh, we'll, we'll try to address them in the future. Um, like I said, we'll get this up on YouTube okay. later. And sorry, what? Perfect. I was just going to add, um, I'll be around. I'm on both Discords as well. So I, I only have Discord, though. I don't have Facebook. So if you have any questions about it, feel free to reach out. I'm happy to answer them. Like I said, we've been doing paper legacy webcam events for, for uh, just over a year now. So I have a lot of experience and have run into pretty much all the gotchas. So if there's any questions, feel free to reach out as well. And if anybody noticed any funky cards or cards funny or business, game, uh, feel free to reach out and make mention of it. All right, so with that, I think we'll go ahead and shut the screen, stream down. So thanks for tuning in.